Hi guys, it's Carissa and I'm going to participate in the one random story tag. I will put all of the information below. This is the creation of Marie and I'll put her channel and all of her video information below um, regarding this tag. So I did one last month or the month before, I'm not sure when. And I mentioned this story like a fool and now of course I have to tell it because you can't mention something and not tell it. Normally, I don't even really care to ever say something's TMI because it's rare that it actually is, in my opinion. My history on YouTube has been about my weight and then about attempts at conceiving, and I've told you very personal, awful, horrifying things about myself. Whoa, sorry, my light's freaking out. But I do feel that this requires a little bit of a disclaimer. I'm going to be talking about... Um, very specific things regarding trying to conceive and you know things you have to do in order for that to be possible as well as things that I did to and around my vagina so if you don't want to hear about that I completely understand <sighs> there's only like five people who know that this happened this story basically starts with trying to improve chances of conceiving and it ends with my husband putting hardware inside of me if you are familiar with issues with trying to conceive um, and even just maybe at home remedies for trying to improve your chances of conceiving, you may know something about the instead cut method um, or the menstrual cut method. If you want to just keep everything as close to your cervix as possible, after intercourse you will use a menstrual cup and it'll keep everything from leaking out. I had used the Instead Cups in the past when I was like a teenager for my actual period, so I thought, oh, you know, that's great, I can use those, but in an effort to be less wasteful, just because we were doing cycle after cycle after cycle, and we still, unfortunately, have not conceived, but I was kind of looking at it as being a long road, and I thought, well, it'd be nice to invest in a menstrual cup, because I always wanted one, and this way I have an excuse to say that I'm buying it for two purposes. And I did a little bit of research and they're kind of pricey, they're like $35 um, and up. So I found one and after reading about it a little bit online, I decided that I was going to purchase it. I did not have a period prior to that, so my first time using this menstrual cup was just for trying to conceive. I think a lot of the problems started with when I first purchased it because when I was reading about it on the box there were two sizes and it said get size A or size 1 if you are under 30 and have never given birth and get size 2 or size B whatever if you are 30 or over or you've had a vaginal delivery. Well I was freshly 30 at the time and I was really sensitive about it even though I didn't think I was and I thought well I just turned 30 and I just decided to purchase size 2 because obviously part of the reason why I wanted to purchase it at all was to make sure that there wasn't going to be any leaking or gapping or any problems and I thought well surely m my physical anatomy has changed that drastically in the, the like two weeks I've been 30 so yeah I'll buy this. I had it in for a certain number of hours and Mike had gone to work and um, I decided I was ready to take it out and I couldn't. I was pulling on the little nub that was on that's on the like fake string that you use to get it out trying to release the suction and nothing I was doing was working. It just would not unlatch. And if I got even the littlest bit of a grip on it and thought I could pull it, it would just immediately snap back into place. So I was Googling on my phone, how do you get these out if they get stuck? And most people are like, oh, just relax. So I'm trying to breathe deeply and be careful. Meanwhile, I'm just scratching my insides all up with my fingernails trying to dig this thing out of me. Um, I probably worked on it for a good hour and then Mike came home from work. I told him about what was going on. He's looking at me like I'm crazy. I probably seemed kind of crazy at that point. I was just, I, it was awful. So we come to the conclusion it's hard to even say these words, but I lived it. I lived through this. Ooh. We came to the conclusion that the best way to deal with this and to remove it was needle nose pliers. You don't know true love until a man has to reach inside of you with needle nose pliers to remove a silicone menstrual cup. It was fine. He didn't pinch me or anything. 
it was much harder for me to handle the fact that it was happening than for him to do it. It was really easy for him to do it. But he actually had trouble, even with the pliers, because it was really stuck in there. I'm going to guess that in the future I would need a smaller size, but on top of that, it probably isn't the best method. Um, I would guess, to be honest, that it's really better just for when you are menstruating because the menstrual fluid will kind of lubricate the area and help remove, release the suction. I currently do use disposable inside cups instead and it works just fine. This is something that a lot of women do and it was suggested to me. I've heard about it before. I tried it and that's how, that's how it ended. That is my one random story. If you have something that even comes close that could possibly make me feel better, please leave it in the comments below. Um, <laughs> otherwise, I apologize for all the cringing that you must be doing right now. Just thinking about, just thinking about that. That is it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.